fins. There's a couple reasons we ended up with our fins like this. Uh, we wanted to cut our fins down just to reduce drag anyways. Um, and we were playing with, with uh, how much we could cut it down, uh, keeping our center of gravity and center pressure where we, where we wanted it. Uh, what we ended up doing, we, we looked and modeled a couple of different ways to cut the fins. Uh, and we looked at a triangle fin and then we realized that we'd have to remanufacture a leading edge. So we looked at how much difference it would be if we just made the fin kind of backwards, which was very, very negligible. So we went with this kind of backwards cut, which I think looks pretty uh, aggressive and cool anyways. We're just kind of happy with how it turned out. So we can only get the motor in about halfway. There's something going on in the upper section here, so we cut another hole in there. We thought maybe that would relieve the pressure. It didn't. We tried some graphite, thinking that would help it slide in further. It didn't help. So now we're sanding the interior of our casing, hoping to get the motor in. So it's a broomstick with sandpaper on the end of it. It's a very, very uh, high-tech gadget here. It's going to work perfectly, though. <laughs> We need a mo uh, an O-ring in the front of the motor tube, and our motor tube is in there pretty good. So we're gonna have to get it out. <laughs> it's on really tight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It explode and uh, it exploded in flight. Had a little bit of a difference in the way the engine was burning, really smoky, but uh, now we got to go out and recover all of its bits and pieces. Um, so we are currently in the process of doing that right now. Hey, March, the payload left. It is now oval shaped. <laughs> Uh, this is what we call cricket sad. It's one of the experiments that one of the professors at MPS is doing. Uh, basically, we hooked up this little circuit card and it has a little uh, uh, thermistor on it. And it, it sends back a tone based on the temperature. And as the temperature varies, as the rocket goes up, the tone is going to change. And it transmits real-time data back down here. And what I'm going to do is just record it. And uh, once we get back to the school, we're going to be able to download this information and decipher it. And we'll be able to, to to plot basically the temperature variation uh, as it varies with altitude. I mean, it's a really good contest and it's a, it's a really fun event. And now that I see everybody here, I mean, there's definitely a lot more energy here than when we were doing it by ourselves in our basement or in our garage. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, what the, what's the point? Like, we have no idea what we're doing this for. Same no one's even gonna be doing it. <laughs> Yeah. And now that we're here, it's a lot more fun. Like the ability to network with all these different people from the different areas of California is like a great opportunity. We rarely get to see people from Northern California, even at our AIAA events. It's and these and these like common things that we all have uh, that we all share. Like doing this contest really brings us together and gives us something to talk about and really helps break the ice, I mean, especially when we're trying to network. I mean, that alone I think is like really worth it. Uh, I joined the AIAA in November last year. So this was kind of the first thing I did with it. 
AAA has always been there. It's been neat to have uh, guest speakers come along and learn about what they're doing in the industry, but uh, it really did pique my interest when this competition came along. That's when I really got involved with AAA, and it's always uh, going to be there for me now, and I want to pursue it and help others in the future uh, with events such as this. The reason I love you know, aerospace is you know, rockets and competitions like this. It really uh, drives me to uh, compete and try and per uh, perfect who I am and what I can do in uh, engineering. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, even from this event, some of the friends that I asked to, to be on the team weren't AIAA members, but they joined as soon as they heard because they're like, wow, this is a really cool event and, you know, we should definitely be involved. I'm hoping that, you know, through the support of the rest of AIAA, that, you know, these, if these types of events will continue, not only for rocketry, but, you know, all aspects of, you know, aerospace engineering um, throughout the year, various competitions, and, you know, hopefully we, it, we increase in popularity, you know, we get more people involved with this sort of thing because it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and it's a big learning experience. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. I, mean, I was talking to Scott and he was saying it was the first time that he's done this, so I think that's really impressive yeah. that he was able to put it together and uh, get everybody out here and get everybody launching. We've got four launches out here and I don't know if we'll get another one, but you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty solid event. I'm pretty happy with it. I was so pretty stoked with the way everything went. <laughs> To go out and actually design and build and see if it works the way you thought it did in the classroom uh, or in, in, on a computer screen is uh, something that you just don't get an opportunity to do very often and I highly recommend it uh, for the AIAA and anyone else that's, uh, that's working professionally in an arena.